Hey everyone, this podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman by heading over to patreon.com slash Gamefully Unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y Unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Podcast mit Tom Reimann und David Bell. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, welcome to another episode of Hypecast. Hypecast. Ah, it's the show where we get hyped about stuff and things. I'm your co-host, Tom Ryman. I'm your other co-host, David Bell. Hypecast. And who are you? Hi- Me. I'm here as the guest. My name is Sarah Griffith. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. It's How good are to be you? here. Kicking off my shoes. Do you mm-hmm. have a bathroom I can use? Sure. Yeah, sure. Just anywhere, honestly. Just, yeah, yeah. Okay. At this Great. point, Yeah. We live like animals. Yeah, after a year of lockdown, wherever you want. Yeah, that is yeah. true. It's fine. It's all, right, all fine. I'm just going to get guys. a pressure washer and clean this whole place out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to burn the place to the ground. Ideally, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cash that insurance. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. I have insurance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you been? What's What's up? What's new? Um, Anything good. New? Uh, well, Bridget and I are cranking away at a new podcast. That's what we've been working on lately. Um, so a little teaser. And of course, we're getting our absolute hard ons for F9, which at time of recording, uh, we're just a few weeks away. I know. We are? Oh, yeah. Yeah. June oh, is like not far away. I the think it's already re- been released the first in reviews, some countries. Yeah. The first reviews are out. Like they, I guess sat on the movie for over a year so they're like you know what fuck it i i know someone who's already seen it actually yes yeah actually i know a, a few people uh at work who have seen it what uh, did they do did they leave the country to go see it no uh no, critics there, is there, I, there can't possibly be a way to see movies uh from the internet that uh that you're not supposed to see is there no not for this movie come on mm-hmm. <laughs> You're I'm not to be Christopher Nolan, but you're really gonna watch F nine on a damn at home screen. I don't think no. so. Yeah. That's an no. IMAX. That's on an your, IMAX three D, four D. It's an event. You're gonna watch F nine on your goddamned iPhone? No. No. No, I don't think so. You wouldn't Mm-mm. download a car. Mm mm. No. You wouldn't download a car. You're right. Mm hmm. That's very true. Yeah, I'm gonna hit that NOS button and race over to the AMC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good one. Good wow. one. Good reference. Yeah, oh yeah. No, I know that reference. A buddy, I don't know if I'll get in trouble for saying this, but a buddy of mine did the F9 junket and a certain Din Wiesel just didn't show up. Oh no. Made, oh. made everybody wait for several hours and then didn't show up. And this is a thing he does on the reg. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sounds well, cool. Well, this hypothetical person, I get it. They mm-hmm. can get away with it. Sounds yeah. really cool. That's awesome. Yeah, very, no, very cool. Yeah. In this in this alternate universe, Ben Wiesel is a huge, huge star. So, yeah, we should probably yeah. get into cool. the show. <laughs> <laughs> I well, guess norm- we can. Norm- normally, we like to ramble and bullshit, but our guest has a hard out tonight, so we gotta get. To- I know. All right, I'm, all right, I'm all right. Brass tax. Brass tax. In brass and tax. Out. Real quick. We're, We're gonna be. Business. It's gonna be amazing. It's go- all business. <laughs> no deviations. Uh, are we ready? Are some we ready to name some, some, some producers? Yeah, yes. let's do it. Let's do I it. I want to hear them. All right. Uh, let's thank some producers, starting with Jake. Thank you to Jake. Sure. Jake. Also, thank you to Numenol Ultra Microscopic Silico Volcano Coniosis Jones. Uh, thank you very much for all of that. Uh, thank you to the baby from Eraserhead. Mm. Thank you. Mm. We love you. Thank you to Chiz Lily Tits. Uh, thanks, Chiz, 
from the Lily Tits family. Dave, I got to tell uh, you, if you're going to spend five seconds on each name. <laughs> we are well, not now who's deviating? Get, now who's deviating now, Tom? Is it me or is it you? It's, it's okay. When I have to leave, I'm just going to walk away. Right, I just not, leave. I'll just politely just leave Irish the goodbye us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just gone. Well, allow me to continue, Tom. Uh-huh. Thomas. Uh-huh. Thomason. So you're still, you're still doing it. You're still doing Thank it. you to Marshall Law. Woo. Thank you very much. Thank you to these seven Bs. Thank you to Breezy Ruizy. Woo. Thank you. Thank you to Davy Francis for the revenge. Thank you to M V B. Thank you very much. Thank you to Phaedrus. Thank you to Ryan, the silly money goose. Woo. Thank you to Chester's prophet. And thank you to definitely not Guillermo del Toro. Oh, totally man. not. Mm-mm. It certainly isn't him. Um, I don't know why we would think otherwise. Let me jump in here. Uh, thanks to Brian or Tom Knows. Thank you to Bob Grenville. Brian. Thank you to Steven. Thank you. Thank you to Down Thank Home you. Chicken. Bacock. Thank you to Han Toomey, the Confused Cyborg. Thank you. Thank you to Asking Seven. Thank you. Thank you to Hey, Fuck You, I'm Happy Ed. Thank you. Thank you to I Was Born to Stare. Thank you. It's written like that. I want you all to feel it. Uh, yeah. Thank you to Dracula, the Bus Driving Vampire. Thank you. Thank you to Tiger Drawer, Tiger Drawers, Pratt Thompson, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. Woo, thank you. Thank you to Dan Hackroyd. Yeah. And thank you to the Kool-Aid Man says, get your vaccine, COVID sucks, I have proof. Mm. Thank you. Mm. It's the Kool-Aid Man. The Kool-Aid Man must be Tom Hanks. Yeah. Who must else be. would have proof? Yeah, and you know how Tom Hanks is always breaking into places? Mm-hmm. That's true. Well, I mean, yeah. who who else got COVID? Yeah. Him Nobody and, else. Him was, and Idris Elba. That and, was it. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. I heard about that. COVID? It's going around, apparently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, a, it's a thing. Have, uh, um, you seen this? You heard about this? <laughs> 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 All right. I want to talk about the Fear Street Fucking trailer. Fear Street! Yes! Yeah. I am all about this. <laughs> Fucking based off R.L. Stein. Oh, yeah. Uh, based uh, off of Fear Street. Based off of the Fear Street books. It was Goosebumps uh, for Teens, in case you're yeah. not old enough to remember. Yeah. Uh, this is um, uh, this is the director of um, Honeymoon. Did either of you two see Honeymoon? No. No. It's a weird one. I've seen it. Okay. Um, it's a lady who directed this movie back in uh, 2014 and hasn't done too much in between. And Honeymoon was really good. It's also the writer, besides R.L. Stein. Mm-hmm. It's the it's uh, her and another person who also wrote Honeymoon. So I don't know. Uh, my point is that Honeymoon was really interesting, and so this looks really fucking good. I've heard yeah, good uh, things fun. about it too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a trilogy of films that are independent stories, but are all connected to an overarching story about the titular Fear Street. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm extremely here for this. I don't, I, I, I love this trash did, when I was a Fear, kid. Did, <laughs> did Fear Street, so I assume all the stories take place on Fear Street. Probably. Right? Yeah. I remember a little bit, I don't ever remember, because this goes back to like the 1600s or something. Mm-hmm. I, well, yeah. I don't remember a Fear Street book doing that. Uh, I only read a handful of them, because I was way more into Goosebumps. Uh, because those were more age appropriate for me at the time. Um, yeah, reading about teenagers fucking and dying in these Fear Street books. Uh, oh, it's like one of them. Oh yeah, they're pretty sweet. <laughs> Did you read the Fear Streets, Sarah? You know what? Actually, I didn't read much R.L. Stein at all. I was trying to think. Like, I don't even know if I read even one Goosebump. Wow. Did you read? Uh, did you read like Christopher Pike? Uh, uh, Christopher no, Pike. I was. I was really into historical fiction. Um, so I read like once I like graduated from the American Girl series. There was like I can't even remember what they were called, but um, they were like historical fiction books that were written like diary entries of uh-huh. like young girls who lived during a certain time period. Which actually I had to laugh with Bridget about this because I read a fake diary about a fake girl in England during World War II, and I was like, you know, I guess if I wanted to read, like, a diary account <laughs> from World War II, one. there's probably another <laughs> book that, like, I probably should have actually read, because, like... Uh, so that's what I was reading. And uh, Harry Potter and, like, Series of Unfortunate Events and Sideways sure. Story from Wayside School. But, yeah, no, R.L. Stein never uh, really made it between my, my fingers. Sorry. 
Oh man, sideways stories is I I had an Obi Wan moment there. <laughs> so that's a name I haven't heard. And I had completely uh, forgotten about those uh, books, and I read the what's shit his out ass of them. Is uh, coming back with more? Really? Yeah. I, I just I mean I just saw this like briefly in a scroll. So I mean please everyone fact check this. But um apparently he's supposed to be coming out with more of these dang stories. Sweet. I'm I'm so pleased he's not dead. Yeah. And that too. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I will read these. Do I need to read Fear Street before I watch the? Uh, I don't, I don't think, think so. Think so. <laughs> I Fear Street. I yeah. I more remember the covers than the actual Definitely stories. The iconic. Are you kidding me? That font. Forget yeah. it. They were, pretty, oh, yeah. they were pretty sweet. That was it. All They're these, like all cheerleader pom pom with the skull in it. Yeah. 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 Fuck me right uh, yeah. up. Mm, mm. Yeah. And then we got. We also got uh, Mike Flanagan doing the Midnight Society Christopher Pike books for Netflix. <laughs> so, really? Oh yeah. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. I so. mean, why the fuck not? Exactly. You know? Why not? Let's, let's yeah. do it. Like, well, Flanagan's got a even... good relationship with Netflix, so yeah, give him yeah, all the get, damn money. Continue giving him money, please, and thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all, all in on Fear Street. I cannot wait. Yeah, these look oh, pretty yeah. kick-ass. Yeah, they look legit good. Yeah. I think it's because they know, like... Like the Goosebumps movies, which I heard were good, but the, I never saw. I didn't see the second one. I I did enjoy the first one. It's surprisingly good. Yeah. They're geared towards p- kids because, of course, they are. Yeah. Um, But there is that weird disconnect where it's like, yeah, I mean, the people who read it are all getting older. And Fear Street, it seems like they're not holding back at all. No. Um, mm. They're just like, yeah, this is for adults because they're the only ones who give a shit. Um, I'm hoping, I'm really, I, I, I know it's for teenagers, the books, but I wouldn't mind a fucking hard R. I think these I are, know. I think these are wow. R-rated. Pedal to the metal. Are they? I, th- I believe so. Oh, that's I wonderful. mean, as R-rated as like, R-rated as a Netflix movie can be, you know what I mean? Like, cause it's not right. like, what are you going to do? Tell 17 year olds you're not allowed to see it? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like really technically to, every, everything on Netflix queue. Yeah, yeah, technically everything on Netflix is unrated, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, there's kid accounts. You can do children accounts. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's like a very weird line, isn't it? Um, with the internet and stuff, like the world is unrated at this point. I don't know. Yeah. I. How do you keep your child from anything? Have you heard you... that WAP song? It's terrible. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Well, um yeah we're so we're all pro fear street i yeah, hope pro fear street. i hope assert I, I hope fear street is so shocking that a, a number of conservative pundits spend a week or two of performative pearl pearl clutching over it oh that would as be they, as they did with wap i'm guessing that won't be the case but i hope i hope so yeah man what if what if it was mm-hmm. oh yeah i want i want this i want fear street to change me I mean, you know, you, wow. I think it, it it has the you're willing, so the possibility is there. That's true. You're willing true. to be changed. Beautiful. Um, well, let's talk about this next trailer for a movie that also could have been called Fear Street, right? <laughs> uh, gentlemen, this is a television series, right? This is a series, <laughs> which is. I this is... several times I had to remember that as I was watching it because it does look like a film trailer, right? Yeah. Because as a film. This is something where I'm like, okay, as a series, I'm like, this seems exhausting. We should probably say what it is. Uh, it's Panic. Yeah. This is Hunger Games, but a, like one town. It's like a town where teenagers, there's like an annual game called Panic, where it's like, it's basically like an escalating game of dares where teenagers can win money. Yeah. And, and I for guess some like reason, a, oh, go ahead. Yeah, like almost like a hands on a hard body situation where it looks like you're eliminated when you're just like too chicken shit to yeah keep playing i don't know yeah or when you die because we learn or when you die we learn from some some of the local police in this movie that we lost two kids to this game last year and so the all i could think about because it's right up top in this trailer so all i could think about while watching the rest of this trailer unfold which is these dumbass kids doing stupid shit in a small town i'm like is this really this hard for the cops to find this well that's the weird thing is the implication from this trailer it felt like the whole town was doing it 
Like the cops were in on it. Watch that be the twist ending. That's what I assumed from this trailer because that's all it could possibly be. Said, yeah, that's yeah. For the, the only, reason you just said, that's Tom, the only explanation. I, I didn't well, even isn't ask the grand that question. prize like fifty thousand dollars? Where are yeah. these broke teens gathering a fifty thousand dollars? Right. I would if I was a cop in this town. I'd be like, so who's the rich person in town? Let's start with the person who can like spend this money. Well, I, I mean, assume... there, there's Lord Kensington up on the hill who made his millions yeah. in in puzzle yeah. rooms. Yeah, I think I, no, he might I, be involved. Oh, the heir to the Jigsaw fortune lives just up on the street. Perhaps we should give them a call. Yeah. I completely interpreted this as a dystopian future where, like, it's it's obviously supposed to be some sort of commentary on, like, you know, on, um like, s- student loans and shit. Like, that's how I thought of it. Is yeah, like, I mean, kind of. Yeah. Where it's like these kids just need fucking money for their f- goddamn life to begin. So it just felt dystopian in the plot. So I just assumed the whole town was doing this and they were like not too they were like kind of bummed about it but it was just tradition. That's not the way um, it's presented but that is the only explanation for how yeah. this game can continue to go on. Right. It's like um, man how, cops break up fucking par- tailgate parties in a field. Like they're not going right, to let Right. 150 kids watch one kid walk a balance beam you know at a at a steel mill or wherever which they you are. know what honestly i right. don't even think that one was too bad like you showed us another girl was getting buried alive like yeah. that was much worse than the yeah you have to walk i mean don't get me wrong i wouldn't do this shit for a second but i kind of looked at that one and thought eh, all right that one's not too bad yeah r- right. right it's like maybe it's like you're looking at the balance beam you're like how much money are we talking about <laughs> yeah this looks very stupid and it looks like i'm gonna watch um every single damn episode probably mm-hmm. god i'm now thinking about this as something the cops can't control like yeah they're literally on like bullhorns announcing this mm-hmm. shit yeah. in like fields and it's like uh, it's a small town the town of carp carp texas is the name of the town in the trailer um and it's like just like Listen for the bullhorn. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's it's yeah. not hard. Go just, where all of the noise and sound and like just follow the any, like, follow where are all any of the car. Follow any How car hard? on the road. Yeah, uh, like do teen like this is starting from the idea that teenagers are actually good at hiding things from adults. Which they're not. Which they are not. Yeah. Speaking so, as like, experience. From the experience that, as a teen, rather. Yeah, the idea that teens would be able to keep this whole fucking thing. Like, why? If, like, if like my friend died doing the teen hunger games, I why didn't they go to the cops or, like, tell their parents? Because they want their know. chance at the money next year. Yeah, dude. you don't want to be a fucking snitch, dude. Yeah, be cool. God it's damn panic. Snitch. What are you, a pussy? This is going to be... Cops are going to find I your ass. That's their I can't find. wait. Honestly, I-, I bet there's going to be some horse shit in this show that is going to keep me watching episode after episode. I can already tell. I mean, I watched I'm... the first season of 13 Reasons Why. Like, yeah. I feel like this one's going to get me. It's going to get me. Uh, I'm excited for, like, season three of this. Like, to see where this goes. Oh, Dave, it's not getting a third season. Oh, I bet it goes, I know. I bet it goes I know. sci-fi. I bet it goes sci-fi at that point. Oh, man. It's fantasy Ugh. in the second one, and then third one will be sci-fi, um, right? And then we'll be dead by the fourth season. It's fine. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Man, uh, uh. I'm proud of all of us. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> panic. Definitely uh, check out the trailer. There's a tiger in it. I don't know where they got a tiger. These teens got a tiger. Yeah, it looks really kick-ass. Everyone go watch the show. Um, I think it's actually going to be fucking badass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the next trailer is something that I don't know. I don't know anything about. It's called Nine Perfect Strangers. Okay, me neither, and I feel like I should know about this. This was I'd... one where I, I saw it was the trailer was short, and I was like, maybe I won't put this on, and then Michael Shannon showed up. Yeah, and then it's and Michael like, Shannon's goddamn face, and then Nicole yeah. Kidman walks in. It's, it's great I cast. think I... Yeah, I remember hearing about this when they were putting the cast together. I think it's a whodunit, but I'm not positive. Mm. I think, it's, I, again, it's I don't know. It's based off a book. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, then that's easy to find out. 
Well, I, I, I have here the Wikipedia for the book, and they don't actually tell me what the book is about. Oh, that's, they just say shame. it's about it's about nine Australians. Oh, thank um, God! At a pricey, yeah, ten day mind and body total transformation retreat, uh, run by a mysterious Russian woman. So it's, I assume wait, there's going to be more said, than that I, going on. I said thank God because I thought thank God Nicole Kimmon doesn't have to put on an accent. But now you're telling oh, yeah. me the character she's playing is Russian? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's oh, a Russian. Oh, my. What? Nicole? Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, she's going to kill it, I'm sure. But, like. She'll be great. Jesus. It's right there. And they're Australian. Right. Just be Australian. Fuck. Yeah. So either this is a murder mystery or, like, just a bunch of people talking for t two hours. Or is this a show? What is this? I'm, it's a TV. I, it's a mini series. I'm actually hoping it's going to be a dark comedy. I would love for this to be a satire. You know, it's well, being, the genre it's is being listed, listed as drama. I'm seeing Ugh. thriller in some places. Like the autofill is what is Nine Perfect and not, Strangers not a about? Comedy. Okay, <laughs> like. okay, okay, okay. People in charge of this. It's not the Matrix. Just tell us what it is. Just tell us what it is. I, I'm. I need to know more to watch this. Okay, so it's just people. It is. It looks like it's just a drama so a about a bunch it, of people who play. come to this. Yeah. And do then, they do they bang? Is there no? Anything they like... each have something they need to work through, and oh. apparently Nicole Kidman helps them achieve a higher understanding uh, is, through unorthodox means. This is literally a play. This is every play that's ever been written. Yeah. This, yeah. This, <laughs> so this is just. I mean, we're Bobby just Cannavale is have... in it. It's a play. <laughs> 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 Damn it! I want to know who done it. Yeah, we're just watching fucking therapy. Yeah, I don't need to watch therapy. I don't want this shit, no matter how good the cast is. Is the ending that they just work out their issues and leave? Uh, spoilers, but yes. God <laughs> damn it! I, I just looked it up. Jesus Christ, that sounds exhausting. Yeah, it sounds like a real piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. It's well, just not at all. Fuck you, nine. I mean, Perfect it's probably strangers. excellent and like meaningful and full of incredible performances, but I don't. And care. it has Luke Evans in it, so that it sure does. I feel yeah. like it's either going to be a terrible piece of shit or like a film that everybody just nuts over because it can't be anything yeah. in the middle. It can't just be fine, you know. Well, it's a mini series, so yeah. I assume every episode's about one of these dipshits uh, and their brother. sadness or whatever. No, it sounds good. Know, I'll probably man. watch it. Uh, the, the fact the fact that I had to search so hard just to, just find, to find out, out what, what the it fuck it's about uh, is not a good sign. Yeah. That, that gives me some real mystery box red flags. It's from the director of Warm Bodies and 50-50. I don't know if that helps. Not mm. really. And Rush. And Rush. Remember Rush? Yeah. Oh, wait. No, not Rush say, the movie. I was going to say Rush, Rush is Ron band? Howard. No, this is Rush, the uh, a medical drama series that I never heard of on USA. Sure. So that doesn't help. What the f I am never heard that. I don't know, man. Here's here's a writing tip, just a free writing tip for anyone. Um, if you're working on a project, a script, novel, whatever it is, and uh, you settle on the title Rush, no. <laughs> yeah. D take take that Change back. <laughs> take that back to square one. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Open up Do the title, open up the title page and final draft unless, and look at it for a little. Unless you're writing a biopic a, of, the, of band the band Rush. Yes. No, then you got to go with the title of one of their songs. Come no, the, on. No, it would be like Spirit of Radio. Yeah, like don't. Sure. <laughs> that's the that's the naming convention of all music biopics. We have to respect that. Mm -hmm. Right. That's fair. Um, all right. Next trailer. Are we moving along? We're really, we're really. <laughs> yeah. Listen, no. I have to Blasting leave. through these trailers. I, I have yeah, to man. leave in five minutes. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, yeah, this we, is, uh, we, we have T-minus. I'm yeah. actually, I'm doing this in my car. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah's already big leaguing us, so we got to Gentlemen, we got to move. <laughs> um, let's talk about Dear Evan Hansen. Okay, yes, and I'm coming in very hot on this one. I'm sorry. Please do. That, no, please do, because I have almost no opinion about this. Okay, so here's the thing. As to Dear Evan Hansen itself, the show, I also similarly have no opinion on this. As somebody with a theater degree, and as somebody mm -hmm. who goes to the theater, appreciates the theater, loves the theater, I 
hate when musicals are adapted to movies and then the trailer comes out and then every little film person who hasn't stepped foot in a theater in like 10 years is like, um, what is this? Are you serious? <laughs> it's like, look, can you give it a fucking chance? Uh, this musical has obviously entertained millions of people coming from around the world to see it. Uh, mm-hmm. I, again, I don't know if it's actually good or bad, but I'll say this. <laughs> it's worth a shot. It's worth it a damn shot. It is very hard to tell. And I will also I... add on the Ben Platt front, I have a very unpopular take on this. But Oh, this is a controversial point for this people. Is, yeah. This is the controversial point. Yeah. This is what I will say. He spoke out about this, right? I think, yeah, he had to be on the offensive about it because he, def- yeah. he definitely knows he doesn't look like a teenager. And he definitely knows he's too old to play the part. Like, I think he said as much. My perspective is actors who originate a role on stage almost never get to then play that role in the film adaptation. Julie Andrews didn't do it. Cheetah mm-hmm. Rivera didn't get a chance to do it. I mean, I literally, outside of Ben Platt, I don't know if I can name a time where the actor who originated the role then got to play the role on screen. So I'm going to say, good for Ben Platt. I look forward to seeing him in this role. This is the role he originated. Honestly, the whole musical centers around Ben Platt being good in this role. I mean, that's how it got successful on Broadway in the first place. I mean, if it wasn't him, you know, would it have been as big? So, uh... My 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 fiery opinion on this is let's everyone cool their damn jets. Let's everyone maybe appreciate what Ben Platt is doing here, what this is doing for actors of the stage. And let's check it out. Maybe it sucks. I mean, again, it could be fucking terrible. I might hate it. Who knows? But let's give yeah, it a chance. There's also, I think you can, when it's a musical, well, particularly when it's on stage, um, but like when it's a musical... Uh, w- w- okay. Let me let me start over again. When it is a stage musical, I think we can be a little less like, well, he's clearly not a teenager because I don't think he was ever a teenager at any point. He was involved with this production. No, it's and the like, suspension of disbelief. You're at least twenty feet away from the actors on stage, so you can get away with a lot of bullshit. But if you're gonna mm-hmm. believe that people are breaking out into song and it's very normal. You can't believe that this guy's a teen. I mean, come on, folks. Where's your imagination? Where's your spirit? Also, uh, fucking Mary Martin played Peter Pan for, I don't know, decades. Uh, She's not a little boy. (laughs) Sure. Right. (laughs) But here's the thing. All right. I have to push back on all of that. I'm going to kill you. I'm literally going to fucking... I'm, I'm on my way to name, your home. Name a place. Name a place. We'll brawl. We'll brawl. No, I, got, mm-hmm. I, got, I got you in the GPS right now. As a moviegoer, <laughs> just watching a trailer, mm-hmm. that man is 30. Um, sure. And, and it's a teenage suicide musical that I don't know the context for. I don't shouldn't have to Google. Shouldn't have to Google a trailer to understand that it, it's based on something good. Because, yeah, you're right. It's the same with adaptations of books. Like, it could come from a very good book. Um, doesn't matter. All I see is this trailer where a, it a, is, it a is, uh, guy who yeah. looks like... He looks like... He's not, he's not old. Like, again, he's 30. I'm older than him. But he's doing it with a bunch of high school students, and he just looks like he's an undercover cop. Um in in a high school like and then the fact that from what i can tell it's just about a guy taking uh like oh. pretending to be friends with a kid who committed suicide oh, here- and it becomes this grand musical about it here's uh, here's where i I'm get just to come like, in with my I, blazing take sure i'm just saying that this this trailer as it stands uh, uh, on its own repelled me that yeah, that repelled me that's fair it is a little cuz i didn't know any i had heard of the show but that's it I didn't really know anything about it. I will, so, yeah, wait, I, I, will it also, I will also say that I, I, I have again. I haven't seen the musical, but like, I again, I kind of thought like everyone knew it was a musical about a teen who committed suicide and this kid who's kind of trapped in this lie. But then I saw on Twitter that a lot of people thought that there was like some kind of LGBT theme in it. And I was like, oh brother, okay. Uh, as it turns out, um, I forget that not everybody keeps up the theater, which you should. I mean, come on, guys, it's good. Theater's good. It's fine. It's fine. 
I went to the, coming from someone who went to performance arts high school. It's fine. Yeah. Also, uh, <laughs> just real quick, not a single other cast member in this movie is a teenager either. Um, although it, it, I I do agree that it is confusing. They when look they, way younger. For the sh- other characters. Sh- sure. Yeah. Like sure. I said, the Ben play had to get on the offense because I think what I saw from him was he was like, uh, they wanted me to play this role and I'm not a teenager. <laughs> like he talked about like having to shave his face like two and three times a day. He knows what he looks like. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my blazing hot take is this is just the plot of World's Greatest Dad. It's similar to that, and it's kind of like if Heather's was serious. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the same as <laughs> World's Greatest Dad. Right. So, yeah. I don't know. Apparently, yeah. the theater production is well-liked, but... I'm sure. Oh, it was really uh, hot. I haven't seen it. Really hot with the teens. It was like the Spring Awakening or the Wicked of Gen Z theater kids. Yeah, jeez. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, maybe it is really good. I the criticism I saw of it is that the movie doesn't at any or the play or the the, the production doesn't at any point recognize that what he's doing is fucked up. Uh, like there's no repercussions. I don't on know the character. that because like obviously this is crazy, but like in the trailer he does he does try to say like listen uh, this letter you know what I mean like I did see. In the trailer right, where they, he rejects it and the parents deny that rejection. Like well, they'd almost yeah, rather believe the lie because it's more comforting to them. That is part of the criticism is that they, they shape the scenario around it being a faultless act. And it's like, it's a really problematic thing. And they make it like, oh, what, is, what can I do? I got to pretend to be best friends with this kid who killed himself. And it's like, I don't think that's true. I don't think you have to do that. Yeah. Uh I mean, hey, it's a tough situation. Can you imagine? He didn't know that he was going to kill himself. Damn. And now he's got his name on his cast? Oh, jeez. Now he's got his name on his cast. Yeah, now it's a whole thing. Yeah. I'm sure there's a- Yeah, it's like an episode of- It's like a Seinfeld episode. I'm sure there's a scene late in the show where he tells his mom or a confidant, and then they sing a song about how it's like, you know what? People just need comfort and love, and what, what would breaking this lie do to- Honestly, it's Shakespearean. I mean, this is this mm-hmm. is theater trope 101. There's a lie that's, you know, running your life. But sometimes the lie is good. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Again, this this might be bad. And I might be defending it. And I mean, well, I felt like I had to defend cats. And I fucking don't like cats either. Yeah. I mean, it is it is a, 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 a like a theater production that a lot of people like. Um, and I'm sure it's good. Uh this movie, this trailer, on the other hand, did not look good. It just didn't. Um, maybe it's good. I don't know. But going by this trailer, I was like, no. I mean, truly, thank you. all contemporary movie adaptations of musicals um, always give me a lot of pause because I just see it. I'm like, they're not gonna make a good movie out of this. It's hard. What? I mean, it's it's hard. <laughs> It is hard. I honestly like when I was I went through a phase during the pandemic when I was rewatching like the old studio musicals where they actually had really big sound stages and they respected the fourth right. wall. And, you know, they they knew like West Side Story is so good about knowing when to be a musical and when to be a film, because there are times where the camera does, you know, move 180 where you don't have the fourth wall like you do in a traditional theater staging and then there were other times like the dance at the gym where that was presented exactly like it would be on stage and it's like this is such a cool blend of what you would see if you saw this on broadway or anywhere and also a movie like i like when a movie musical is aware that it is both a movie and a musical and i feel like the trend lately has been to make movies so like this gives me pause i mean i literally watched the prom um cats say no more it's just like i I wish these directors would like zoom out and remember like this was originally enjoyed on a big stage with a lot of negative space and with you know scale and size and scope and let's like because when you close up because like we were talking about ben platt if you close up on him yeah literally no chance in fucking hell he's a teenager but i bet on stage yeah sure whatever oh yeah and it's different on stage. Yeah, in this, you know what he reminds me of? Do you remember um, uh, 
conf- uh, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind when they do flashbacks mm-hmm. with um, Sam Rockwell <laughs> as a teenager, and it's just Sam Rockwell with some extra makeup on him. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's, that's what it looks like. It's I think 15. they also tried to digitally. He looked yeah. a little blurred, his skin. Yeah, it looked like they were doing something. Um, but you know yeah, what? I, th- I watch fucking Grease, and them motherfuckers are in their 50s and 60s. So. Right. Like, Travolta's oh, yeah. like 32 years old. I, <laughs> oh, yes. I add this to the long history of that's adults what, playing teenagers on film and television. Exactly. That's what Ben Platt said in his comment. He was like, go watch Grease. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, you're not wrong. Yeah, he's not wrong. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> like, it's like yeah I, it is if of all the things you're gonna nitpick like i get well, I, I get right, he's obviously a teen but it, at the same time it's here's like, what well, that's i okay. here's what i think it might be um is that the difference between this and greece and i haven't seen greece in a while but greece is a lot lighter in subject oh yeah certainly it's and for something like this that's actually kind of a heavy subject that's supposed to be aimed at kids at teenagers um, they should really have a teenager doing that because otherwise it feels like an after school special. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't. Where it's like an adult with a backwards hat telling kids Definitely. not to do drugs. It just doesn't work for a drama. Um, I, I, it, 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 it is a problem. Like the, the musical part. Yes, of course, people don't sing in real life, but like there's just something about it that breaks, breaks it for me uh, for this subject. I, I don't disagree with you. I totally, yes. I also think that this film would not be made if Ben Platt wasn't on board. Because like I said, right. the success of Dear Evan Hansen is thanks to Ben Platt. Like, he actually right. has a really big following of young girls. And um, this is so iconically his role, which is why I'm saying, like, it's almost good for fucking him. Because, yeah, easily they could have cast, you know, fucking... I was gonna say Harry Styles, maybe not Harry Styles, but like yeah. they could have cast somebody new. You know, they they totally could have put a teenager or at least a person under the age of twenty five, or at least somebody who looks like a teenager in this role. I'm thinking the literal like production and the yes, we're gonna make this in a movie had this string attached that it has to be Ben Platt. Maybe because I don't feel like Ben Platt is like dying to play this role anymore. Oh yeah, I can see it being kind of a bummer. Yeah, to, I like because again, literally, he is the success of the show. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I say give it we'll a see. chance. I say give it a chance. If it sucks, uh, then it sucks. Whatever. I don't know. I might hate it. Sure. <laughs> like yeah, again, no, that's fair. I might hate it. So. No, you reserve the right to hate it. It's fine. We won't. We no, nobody here. I just don't want any fucking hold that tweets. Against you. It's America. This is America. Yeah, that is true. You can hate whatever. That is very true. Um, speaking of hate, uh, Friends: The Reunion trailer. Sure. Why not? Sure. Yeah. Um, are Are you guys either? Are you guys Friends fans? I no. grew up watching Friends. Like I, ha- I am very loyal to the Musty TV Thursday NBC comedy block. Like, <laughs> sure. Um, I literally grew up watching Friends. Will and Grace. I transitioned yeah. to The <laughs> Office. Musty, my name is Musty Earl Thursday. Is my godparent? No, seriously. Like uh, <laughs> that. That was a big part of my early television culture watching. I watched religiously. I watched the finale. I remember being so like, oh my god, like. Literally, there was, I was, I mean, I was young and I did think like, I can't imagine TV with, without friends. Um, and then right. once the show ended, I've never revisited it. I've never looked back. I've never, uh, I don't have the nostalgia fondness for it that other people do. Right. I really think it's the Netflix crowd. Cause I see this happening with the office as well, where it's like people who did not watch the show when it was on TV, but who found it on Netflix when they can binge through it and rewatch it a hundred thousand times. Because if, yeah, if, if you ask people who are like, the, I love The Office, if you ask them, did you watch it when it was on NBC or did you watch it when it was on Netflix? Nine times out of ten, they're going to say they found it on Netflix. Yeah. It's interesting. It's, it's, it's very much that. It's a dentist office show. Like, you know what I mean? It's it a, is. Like, yeah, it's a rerun. I have a dentist that will, will put on TV while he's working on you. For sure. And he'll put on Friends because he knows you won't laugh. Uh while watching Friends, so it, it's fine. It has not um, aged well in, in I guess almost that was, any respect. 
Yeah, that was the thing is I'm not a Friends fan. I know a lot of people who I respect who have a lot of fond memories of Friends, but Friends always seemed like that era's version of Big Bang Theory, where it was like, it's so easy. Like, it's called yeah. Friends. I, it's like, we're friends! There's three guys, three girls! Will they, won't they? And it was like, it's so incredibly low-hanging fruit for a premise uh, that it just seemed so silly. But I can't sure. say that... I've never watched really an episode, so I can't... You know, like, yeah, I, I, was I gonna have say, no idea if just, the episodes are any good. Right, just from a premise standpoint, you can say that about 99% of shows. That's true. Um, I will um, say that yeah, but- when I was watching it, when I was like really into it, it I never really thought it was laugh out loud funny, but I was invested in these people. Like I was invested right. actually in like not really the Ross and Rachel of it all, but like I, I that was actually what kept me tuning in was the actually the drama and like the conflict. Right. Yeah, it's, it was like a soap opera. But also keep in mind, like. I was a child when I was watching. Right. Like I don't, I don't know if that's still the case, but it must be because people do marathon watch Friends to this day. Know. Yeah, uh, and so I, I've seen a handful of episodes, and it never, it was, it was, you know, it's '90s sitcom, so it was, it was funny. It's just dated. Now. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Um, I don't know what this reunion is. It, it appears this to be not like an episode. It's just them talking it's and doing things. Yeah, Keep in like mind, it. this is what was supposed to actually launch HBO Max last year. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yes. This was supposed to be their like, big ticket, like everyone get HBO Max because we have this exclusive Friends reunion. But then obviously it was postponed. Um, I, I will say I was kind of cynical going into it because I was like, are we really going to drag these six actors out every fucking five years for a friend's whatever. Um, But there was something about this one that I was like, I guess this one's not of the reunion shows I've seen. There's something about this one that I think is a little bit, it's different. It's not like the other girls. Maybe I'll watch it. It looks, it looks less like a bunch of rich people on zoom talking. And it's a bunch of rich people like on the sets. talking. I like that they were reading their scripts you know what i mean like yeah. that part i think was what i was like oh this is kind of interesting and they had like trivia like that's kind of fun i might, yeah. I might turn it on in the background and look at my phone for the majority of it you know yeah 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 maybe it's not, yeah, it's, it's not a bad idea if you want to do it for an unscripted reunion special it appears what they have assembled it's not the worst idea no it definitely seems like the best way to do it mm-hmm. well and i also think like truly the legacy of friends is that that cast first of all that cast you know, all of them became stars. Some of them are still A-list stars. Um, but the fact that they genuinely all really like each other and are, like, legitimately very good friends, I think that's also right. why the show has lived as long as it has because wouldn't it suck if it was like, oh, yeah, the cast of Friends fucking hate each other. <laughs> right. Well, there must be... It must be somewhat exhausting to, like, imagine you had a job, like, 15 years ago. Definitely. And you have to Definitely. constantly remember Definitely. your old job. Yeah. And it's like, ah, oh, man, I'm, like, I'm a different person. Like, it's, even if it was good or bad, it's like, I, I don't want to be constantly thinking about this, If you that know? job made you a multimillionaire, though. Oh, yeah. No, it's the same with Star Trek and all, everything. Yeah. Where it's like, it's just part of their job and they made, yeah, I don't feel bad for them. They're all very rich people. Uh, oh, actually, the big so, story. Yeah. Uh, do you remember when they were going to give Courtney Cox a raise of a million dollars an episode? And she was like, I'm not going to take the raise unless everybody gets a million dollars per episode. And they right. did. They all negotiated together. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I literally I think they were the f- don't give a fuck about friends. But now I feel like I'm convincing <laughs> myself to give a fuck about friends again. <laughs> You, are, pand- you, you do have, have a Rolodex brain. of knowledge, yeah. I, I'm just very, I mean, that's true about most things, but I'm just very vulnerable. Like, everything I see now, I'm like, you know what? That was a great, like, <laughs> Godzilla versus King Kong, where are the Oscars? Uh, brilliant. Like, everything I'm seeing now, I'm like, this is great. Mm-hmm. Everything is great. Why, why, why spend time being pissy about something when I could just watch it and just be happy that I'm alive and vaccinated, you know? I'm, right, I'm turning right. a new leaf. I used to be such a hater, but now... Oh, yeah. Uh, Maybe I'm going to be a lover. Maybe I'm going to be a live, laugh, lover. At least for a little bit. Yeah. Right? Like, I've been going out and being the same way because of vaccination, being like, this is great. And then uh, uh, slowly but surely, I'm like, oh, right. 
yeah, I don't like being outside that much. Yeah, I'm but sure, it, I'm at sure first something, it's great. something at will, first it's great. Yeah, something will poison my well. But right now it's just clear mm-hmm. drinking water, baby. I'm alive. Yeah. The friends are getting <laughs> I'm back alive. together. I'm alive. Friends reunion. <laughs> oh, man, Lisa we got to move on. Courtney Cox. <laughs> All right. Speaking Matt of LeBlanc. having a, a, a appreciation for life, uh, this is the trailer for The Ice Road with Liam Neeson. <laughs> and Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> and, Laura, and Larry Fishburne, yeah. Yeah. Uh, am I insane? It's an ice road, and it's sure. going to break. <laughs> has Liam Neeson, the last like nine movies he's been in, has been like in a tundra, right? At least yeah, one. It yeah, feels that way. like like well, he I forget. only makes movies in like the cold. Yes, like the last one he did was out cold. I think. Uh, oh man! And I then the gray. This movie he just was fucking a... hates the snow. Yeah, I I thought this was honest. I got a sequel. I, like I was like, oh, this must be like from a series. Yeah, because Liam Neeson is back at it again on the ice, baby. Can't get yeah, him man, out of that gotta, cold. He and Lawrence Fishburne have to put together a crew to drive some pipes across 300 miles of ice to yeah, very, save yep, some very miners F&F trapped in a mine. Here's here's what I'll say about this movie: the director, who's also the writer, uh, is also the writer of The Saint, Armageddon, and Die Hard with a Vengeance. Kick ass. Okay. Uh, so this one's for I the don't boys. Know. That 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 makes it at least sort of worth seeing. Also, the 2004 Punisher, which they directed. Great. Oh, Jonathan Hensley. Yeah, yeah. That's the. Uh, is that the one with what's his face? With Thomas Jane. Yeah. Thomas Jane. That's the Thomas Jane Punisher. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, this this trailer doesn't look that good. But oh man, I'm I, I'm, I, I'm I, totally I, on board I, for no, this shit. I, yeah, I was wet for this motherfucker. Are you kidding me? Did you I see mean, when that truck skid and flipped over, but they I were attached did. to each other and they were driving together? I did see oh, that. Oh fuck, yes, absolutely. This movie is going to rule. And then me? henchmen show up. Henchmen, henchmen show up. That's the part that's fucking awesome because like that you could write a movie just about right, completing I, this well, task. Well, for two minutes of the trailer, that's what it is. And then all of a yeah. sudden, we're shown these two guys in a boardroom who are like, they can't make it. And then fucking henchmen show up. Yeah. I'm obsessed. And, I'm so into this. Yes. And the fact that it's this guy behind it, I'm like, yeah, yes, absolutely. Please. The writer of Next. Yeah. Nicolas Cage's Next. Let's do it. Like, that's the thing. Is, baby. Yeah, there's one thing that I can be sure of with this movie is that it won't be boring. No, uh, no part of yeah. this trailer was boring. <laughs> is this going to play in theaters? I think this is a Netflix. Oh. Yeah. Well, this is the thing is that Liam Neeson no longer guarantees good movie for me. When I see Liam Neeson, I'm like, it's oh, a total no. crapshoot. Yeah. Yeah, because he is now in the Bruce Willis stage. Um, so like. Yeah, the trailer had some pretty awesome moments, but like, I don't know. There's just so many movies um, and so many Liam Neeson in the snow movies, like you guys said. What really elevates this for me is the writer director. So I am I am on board. Yeah. Yeah. Film of the year. Like I'm I'm already for your consideration. I'm starting the campaign today. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. (laughs) You seen this truck? Oscars. (laughs) Oscars. <laughs> I'm just gonna send the trailer, uh, and, and the email subject will say, "Say no more." Why is there? <laughs> okay, I'm I'm looking it up because I was like, "Why? Why are there henchmen?" Looks like it has to do with a diamond mine. Great, perfect. So I think it's I think it's like a hurricane heist situation. That's where it. like okay, th- so there an ice driver leads an impossible rescue mission uh, to save the lives of trapped miners. Mm-hmm. Uh, despite thawing waters and a threat they never see coming. So I guess they want, I assume they're like trying to get the diamonds, right? That would make sense. Yeah, they must be their boss, you know, something they, turns out they're working on the same team, whatever, 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 blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I don't I don't that's need to film. guess what happens in the ice road before I see it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I'm just going to watch it. Yeah, you're just going to let it wash gonna over you. I'm going to experience it, yeah. Um, all right, final trailer, folks. Uh, this this creeped out, and like, I don't know why we aren't all talking about this. Uh, the trailer for Snake Eyes, the GI Joe sequel. Speaking of kick ass, yeah, yeah, this looks fine. Yeah, but like, why why aren't we t- like this? Just creeped out. 
Yeah, and this trailer. I didn't know this was a movie that was happening. I didn't know Henry Golding is going to be in it. Um, I think maybe it's because the other G.I. Joe movie was just so abysmal that... Um, the two other G.I. Joe movies. Oh, yeah, and the, Christ, and the second see? one was great. Yeah, the second one's fine. I'm not even aware that a second one exists. Yeah, they did one with The Rock. Yeah. Oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, no, I didn't um, see that particular film, but I will be watching Snake Eyes because this oh, yeah. is sick. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. It's got uh, uh, Andrew Koji as the bad guy. Uh, he's mm-hmm. on the he's on that HBO show Warrior, um, mm. and he's the new Storm Shadow in this movie. From so- the director of the Time Traveler's Wife and R.I.P.D. Ah, oh, yeah, nice. Mm. <laughs> and Flight Plan. <laughs> I'm wow! So yeah, this one's th- this is a a popcorn flick for sure. I'm gonna eat it yeah. up. Five stars for your consideration. What what an impossible to decipher filmography that director has. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I skipped some of the other ones. They also did Red. That makes more sense. Okay. Um, Allegiant. Uh, kind of. And the and Insurgent yeah. of the Divergent series. Sure. So, yeah, no, that doesn't make it any... Wow, so uh, the Divergent series and the G.I. Joe film series, this dude is like, hey, are there any franchises that nobody's really giving a shit about? I'll get in yeah. on that. Yeah. Now we're getting Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins. Um, yeah, this really, like, I'm excited for this, but, like, the public can't possibly be, right? I don't know. We'll like, see. I guess we will see. I mean, if they saw this um, trailer, they'd be hyped as hell. They should be pumped. Yeah. They're fighting, they're ninja fighting on a truck. I mean, yeah, say no more. It doesn't look safe. It looks unsafe. I mean, it looks awesome, though. Yeah. And isn't that really yeah, yeah, what, yeah, mass- yeah, yeah. what matters? Absolutely. Um, all right. So so A pluses all around from beginning to end? Absolutely. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely. No notes. Hey, every, every single trailer I saw today... All right. I'm in. All in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move on to news stories. Let's but do first, it. we got some more patrons to thank. Uh, thank you to E.T., the est- extravagant terrestrial. Mm. Thank you to Cody Johnston's time machine noise. Mm. Thanks to Pete Vorpagel. Thanks to Glitterous. Woo. Thanks to Thanks for having Jason Pargin on. Here's 25 bucks. Yeah. Thanks to the Midnight Patron with Patrons at Midnight. Mm-hmm. Thank you to Exploding Runes. Oh, yeah. Thank you to Andrew, Andrew, how, how. Mm. Thank you to Vincent. Mm-hmm. Thank you to Rev MD. Nice. Let me jump in here. Thank you to John Munez. Thank you to Wavy Rancheros. Thank you to Dr. DNA. Thank you to Lauren Gucci. Ooh. Thank you to James Thank you. Rainey. Thank you to Thank Bootler you. Bootlison. Thank, Thank you to Grumblebee. Thank you. Thank you to Tux. Thank you. Thanks to Ricky Cilantro. And thank, thank you, you to Norm from Cheers. Norm. Thank you. All right. So- They've just announced Attack the Block 2 with the original cast and crew. Yes. Awesome. So that means what? That means, um, oh, what's the director's name? Joe Cornish, right? Yeah, and yes. John Boyega is going to be in it. Yeah, George, Joe Cornish. Um, I assume Edgar Wright will produce again. Yeah, I, I hope Nick Frost is back. Yeah, fuck, fuck it. it. Bring um, everyone back, even the dead children. Yeah, even- <laughs> Especially yeah. the dead children. This is- this is one of those news is that like if I just heard there was a sequel, I'd be like, oh, no. And it just the fact that they're all back. It's like, yeah, that's critical. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. that is really cool. Just I've the fact they for, got John Boyega back. Yeah, I've said this for ages now, but I really do think John Boyega has like a Harrison Ford career ahead of him. Where like, yes, yeah. but I feel like he's already fast forwarded to like the, you know, pop culture action lovable guy to like actually serious legit actor like he's already outpacing Harrison Ford on that front because he just won a motherfucking Golden Globe yeah which I mean it doesn't maybe doesn't mean anything anymore but like dude this guy I feel like has been working for like the last 10 years and is just killing it he's great yeah he's such a yeah. star like he has to be a star this I love John this, Boyega oh yeah for sure Obviously. And this movie this movie specifically like the first one He's so captivating in it, and so oh, good. I think and this it's, is what it's a put, it's a it's a dramatic performance. It's not like an action guy, right? There's a lot to love about Attack the Block, but he really makes it work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, he's amazing in that. I mean, that Attack the Block is the one that 
got everybody onto the John Boyega hype early, early right. on. There's, there, there's a reason people saw that movie and were like, yeah, he's the one. Yeah. And well, yeah. well done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, equally amazing news, <laughs> Bruce Willis and John Travolta are teaming up for the first time since Pulp Fiction. And you know, to those do, guys are I stars. assume, a straight... Yeah. They're stars. I've been Paradise saying this for a um, This can't possibly... Like, they're both... They both have been phoning it in for so long. This has to be... Do you th- All right. Are, do you think this is like a thing? Is this, is this like a real movie? Or no, is this like I think it's, them versus th- phoning it paycheck. in together? Yeah, I think it's a paycheck movie. I think it's like a VOD action movie that got filmed in Lithuania. Oh, I can't fucking that's, wait that's then. that's all um, Bruce Willis makes now. They're filming yeah. in Hawaii, I will have you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Because well, I, I actually read that and it, it caught my attention of like, these motherfuckers <laughs> are <laughs> making this production film in Hawaii. So they can get a big fat check and hang out in Hawaii for like three months. The best thing <laughs> about this movie was the uh, the story that I saw when it broke just had a, like a couple of, oh, it's, well, it's kind of the same one. Um, but it had like this, uh, just three separate headshots of the, of the three different headlighting actors that they'd spliced together. Um, and the one that's on this deadline article you included is a little bit better, but it's the same picture of John Travolta. So look at that picture of John Travolta to imagine what I'm about to say. Mm-hmm. Um, All right. The pictures they had assembled for the initial announcement that I saw, John Travolta was the only one who looked happy about it. Right, that checks out. <laughs> like everybody, like the like Bruce Willis and uh, Priya Lumberg, um, I believe is the other star. Um, the, it looked like like they were just kind of bummed out, and like Travolta was like, "Hey, a movie!" Right. <laughs> I, I got one. Yeah, I got one. <laughs> All right, so for the record, this is from the writer of Breach, starring Bruce Willis. Yeah, that recent from one. From 2020. He's fighting Cosmic, monsters in space. Yeah, Cosmic Sin, starring Bruce Willis, where he fights monsters in space. Uh, American Siege, also 2001, starring Bruce Willis. All the same writer. Um, it must be, this must be just Bruce Willis's writer. Or it's just a, that, it's just it's a just VOD personal. studio he works with. Yeah, I think because both of these writers that are attached both have similar credits. Uh, this is the producer of Fire with Fire, starring Bruce Willis in 2012. So yeah, this is going to be, like, you can already picture the poster, right? Oh, yeah. It'll yeah. be the blank faces of John Travolta and Bruce Willis no, some, holding guns. Right, somebody will have badly photoshopped a gun into someone's hand. Yeah, yeah. with the same that same font that font that's in all of them and it'll either be like co- completely blue or completely yellow or a combination of the yeah. two. Oh, i can't fucking I can wait. see it yeah it's gonna be amazing i'm yeah. glad i'm glad everyone's making money you know yeah i i am Good for them I, the world is will be a finer place with this piece of shit in it exactly <laughs> exactly a more rich uh, a more richly realized place for us all <laughs> 10 out of 10 two stars Two two thumbs. <laughs> two stars. <laughs> two, five five thumbs. Two stars. I lost baby. a couple on the star scale. <laughs> <laughs> it's two out, out of ten, two stars, but not quite four stars. <laughs> it's got the numbers, but not the shapes. Yeah. Right. Um. All right. Next news story is uh, they're making a pet cemetery sequel. Prequel. Yeah. Oh, it's a prequel, so it's not going to be like. Because they made a Pet Cemetery sequel with Eddie Furlong. They sure did, uh, yeah. 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 That was a straight-up sequel, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I assume this is unrelated. Um, yeah. So with uh, with Lindsay Beer uh, directing, who's a first-time director. Cool. Yeah. Um, I think, Tom, you and I, we enjoyed the new one. Yeah, it was, the, yeah, it was from the Starry Eyes directors. Yeah, I think society didn't. No, that oh, movie was, was very po- poorly received by critics. Oh, yeah. I guess the people I know who saw it enjoyed it. That's why I'm a little shocked. I really liked yeah. Starry Eyes. Yeah. I really liked uh, their work on this, on the new one. And yeah, if the news of this sequel, everybody's like, ah, geez, what a bummer. They're making another. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, why not? Hype let's is real. bring some more shit back from the dead. 
Yeah. You're not a... going to believe what comes out of the ground this time. <laughs> yeah. Is it a person? It it Okay, it is a person, you guessed, but <laughs> yeah. still, it's bone chilling, I guarantee. Let's bring, <laughs> yeah. let's bring let's bring like six babies back. Like babies. Fuck it. Babies. Yeah, just yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's metal. Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have like piranha, but babies. Yeah, no. Get Liam Neeson's uh, truck from the ice road to jackknife through a daycare and uh, <laughs> put all those babies into the pet cemetery. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Now we got a movie. <laughs> oh Photo- my god! Photoshop a gun into John Travolta's hands. <laughs> yeah, shooting babies. <laughs> fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> gives a shit. Give a shit. What if he shows up in the Friends reunion? <laughs> oh, oh man! I mean, James well, Bruce Corden Willis managed could. to sneak into it, so that's true. Yeah. And yeah, Bruce Willis could. That's true. He, he is in he an, episode. an episode. Yeah, I remember that. Damn, actually, that's... it was good when Brad Pitt was on back when oh, he was yeah. married Jennifer Aniston for Thanksgiving. That was event television. I man, remember that I episode. That one. I might love Friends. <laughs> I think I really like Friends, you guys. I've, I, I've never thought about I have not thought about this show in like 15 years, but maybe I need to get back into it. I think that's what my assumption of what Friends is, is that it's a beautiful, like, salve. You know, like, it's <clears> not... I mean, they it, said in the trailer it's funny that it's, enough it's, it's and a it's, comfort. Like, it's, it's yes. been a comfort to people. It's definitely a comfort rewatch. <clears throat> yeah, which, going back to the playing in a dentist... It's a place where people are often nervous, uh, and they're it's playing safe. friends to, friends to is help. Safe. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. That's that's a great thing to have. Uh, it's a great thing to put out in the world. Uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. Like to be, they should be proud of that. Well, they um, seem they uh, they seem very pleased with themselves. You know what? I love friends too. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no one told me life um, was going to be this way. Yeah. All right. All right. We got to keep moving. We got to keep moving. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, yeah, I- I'm at my let's destination. Let's thank some more patrons. All right. Uh, s- thank you to Space McNulty. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you to Hiram. Thank you to, oh, great. It's that guy. Uh, thank you to Nolan Mayton. Thank you to Vaccinated Man, Andrew McGuire. Woo. Thank you to Ozzy. Thank you to AJ. Nice. Thank you to Tip Drizzle. Mm. Thank you, Tip. T- uh, thank you to Frankly Amish. Oh, let thank me you jump in much. here. Thank you, Burrito Mouth. Thank you to thank Mrs. You. Voidus. Thank you. Thank you to the ghost of Dave Thomas. Thank you. Thank you to Aaron Burser. Thank you. Thank you to David Knife Boot, Henson MBA CPA. Thank you to Christopher you. Robert Sparts Esquire. Thank you. Thank you to Mackenzie Fuck Shuffling with Willem Dafoe's Confusingly Large Dick Chill. Cool. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's very large. That apparently. is an Antichrist reference. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank yes. you to Vaccinated J. Thank you. And finally, thank you to Pie Guy. Thank you, Pie Guy. Always a pleasure. We did it. We're done. It's over. Well, Dave. It's over. Dave, we're it's almost over. done. We're almost done. What? 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 Because I'm going to need you to tell us before Sarah has to leave whether <laughs> you have a movie that deserves more hype. Oh my God, I do! You piece of shit! All right, let's yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> Lay it on us! <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Everybody, settle down. Everybody, settle the <laughs> hell down. This movie is called Censor. Uh, it is coming uh, to VOD on June eighteenth, or you can see it in theaters June eleventh. Um, it's it's resting at about an eighty-eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It made it through, I believe, Sundance. Uh, and people liked it. It, it did have those laurels, film. yeah. Yeah, it's a horror film because, of course, it is because I, I'm curating this. Um, it is about a film censor in the 80s who had to watch all these shitty slasher films. Um, and she's essentially desensitized to, you know, watching such things until she sees in one of the movies who a woman she believes to be her disappeared sister. Um, and, and then it goes into, I don't know, a big surreal craziness. You kind of have to see the trailer from there on. It looks, uh, it looks really fucking weird. It's a great trailer. It is a it's solid a great trailer. trailer. Yeah. Great, great, uh, poster too. Mm-hmm. I, li- I literally will seek cool. this out. Yeah. It just looks, I don't know. It's getting, you know, a lot of that hype, a lot of that sweet hype. 
I believe it's a first time uh, director. Let me look. Uh, she's done a bunch of shorts. This okay. Director. Oh, good for her. Um, yeah. Okay. And, uh, I'm I don't saying, know. It, it's, I'm saying like, oh, I'll definitely check this out as if I haven't been like, I'll watch the Friends reunion special. I don't give a fuck. Be amazing if you were like, fuck this movie. I don't know. This like, one kind of dense. One. Yeah. <laughs> no, it just, it looks really weird and um, a really cool premise. And uh, I don't know. People are just saying good things about it. So y- you should definitely, like, I'll, I'll, as always, start with the trailer and go from there. Very nice. Good um, wreck. Yeah, yeah. No, it looks cool. And I like the, uh, you know, v- horror is so tied to, like, VHS culture. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, yeah, um, true. Good point. And this looks really like, dope, yeah. Yeah, I like this this period where it's the the idea of this job as a film censor having to watch all these movies and what it would do to you which is make you completely desensitized to this shit yeah and in fact irritated by it right well, you remember, it's it, this trailer reminded me uh real quick uh if you remember this was like soren's first job when he moved to la Oh really? Yeah. He, oh yeah. He, he had to, to do like DVDs. He style. would test oh DVD God. menus. Yeah. So he'd have to yeah. sit there and watch the DVD to make sure it was all coded right with like the right language tracks and shit. Right. Yeah. It's one of those jobs. It's like video game tester where you're at a kid and you're like, I want to do that, like, and no, then you, you become older <laughs> yeah, and it's like, oh yeah. no, never mind. It's like no, this I don't. Is nightmare it is actually. Mind numbing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so yeah. Uh, what was this called? Sensor. Sensor. Check it out. Check out. Google it. Uh, check out the trailer. You'll love it. You'll fucking love it. Mm. And that's a check sewed. out the poster. That's a so. We did it. Oh man. Yay. Oh, we did it. Yay. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much for doing the show. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I've got plenty of time on my heart out. So thanks for thanks for respecting my busy schedule. You know I am zip zapping and zopping nonstop, baby. I'm living fast. I always, I oh, people, I always say that about you. I say she's zip zapping. She's zip zapping. zapping. Yeah, I I'm do have fa- to ask though. I'm living though, fast and furious, baby. Are mm-hmm. you are you using like a like the hands free right now? Because I heard you snapping, and I gotta you know I want to make sure you've got at least one hand <laughs> on 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 the wheel of your Corvette as you drive I'm, to your big Hollywood. You know party. what? I'm actually. Yeah. It's not a Tesla. I just outfitted my Honda CRV from 2007 to drive itself. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. You know, you don't need to buy yeah, a new car. The- you just got to fix up your engine a little. You know. Yeah, sure. yeah, no, you just, yeah, you, you know, just you, just, you tie some rope to the steering wheel. Plus, like, honestly, I've been on the 405, so I've just been parked, you know, for like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. It's not that big of a deal. Right, right. Oh, little, little LA joke. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> the 405. <laughs> the 405. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you want to plug? What do you want to tell people about? Um, I guess I would tell everybody to keep their eye out for Bridget and I's new podcast. It's called Shooting Threes. We're going to be examining film trilogies, complete pure trilogies. None of this four, five prequel shit. Uh uh-uh. uh. This is one, two, and three. Um, we are, oh, I don't want to say which one we're starting with, um, but we've been. Working on that, recording that. I've I've laid down a theme song that's pretty damn hot. It's gonna be a, the song of the summer, uh, I think. So you can check that out. It's on the uh, Small Beans Network. You can also follow me at Twitter sk underscore Griffith, where I will no doubt be plugging it nonstop for a few months. So um, yeah. And then of course everybody go check out the Fast and the Furious F nine in theaters June twenty fifth. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you haven't been paid to plug that, right? Mm-hmm. No, of of course not. I, I would never be bought. Right. <clears throat> Just making that clear. Just making that clear. Oh, that's, that's out of yeah. That's the too bad. Of your I was going to say that's too bad. You might want to rethink that position. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if there were franchises who needed to pay me for advertising, I wouldn't be starting with the Fast and the Furious. Okay, I'd send that invoice to a few other places. Okay. Yeah. Um, Dave, why don't you tell them what we got going cool. on? Cool. Ah, oh, jeez, we got a Patreon, patreon.com slash Gamefully Unemployed. We have exclusive podcasts on there like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman and Fox Mulder is a Maniac. Mm. We have a new podcast that we share with the Small Beans Network called Star, or not called Star Trek, called Futurama. No. It's Star it's Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek, Trek the, next the next Futurama. Futurama. <laughs> it's such a hard name. Is it? Uh, check that out. It is. It's difficult. 
Uh, we're recording a new episode tomorrow. Check that out. Check That's out the intro. Show. Familiar uh, voice in that intro. Yeah, pr- awesome, uh, awesome work. The first thirty seconds of every episode of that, I love. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, it's Amazing. a good show. Um. So yeah, check us out. Yeah, we also have a store, tpublic.com slash stores slash Gamefully Unemployed, where you can get t-shirts, masks, mugs, stickers, posters, all kinds of things. We got some new Mulder stuff in there that you should check out if you like the X-Files or our show about it. Yeah. Um, And that's it! We did it! Yeah, say goodbye, everyone! Goodbye! Goodbye! Bye! Our music is produced by Chris Corlew. You can follow him on Twitter at at the Corlew, C-O-R-L-E-W, and find more music at shipwreckedsailor.bandcamp.com. Our artwork is produced by Justin Brown. You can follow him on Twitter at at Justin T. Brown, and find more of his artwork at artnessbyjustinbrown.com and justinbrown.info.